Welcome to another AP Chemistry General Chemistry video. I'm Jeremy Krug and thanks for joining me. In this series of videos we're learning about gas laws and specifically the difference between ideal gases and real gases. Now if you've been uh, following this video series here up to this point we've learned about various gas laws like the ideal gas law especially and Graham's law of effusion and Dalton's law and Boyle's law and Charles law and some other gas laws but when we, specific, when we specifically talk about the ideal gas law, we might be wondering what is an ideal gas? Why is it called the ideal gas law? Well, it's because there are some things that ideal gases have to do. For example, in order for something to be an ideal gas, first of all, an ideal gas has molecules that take up no space. So that's what an ideal gas would have to be like. And an ideal gas also has this other second uh, qualifier. Ideal gases have molecules that really don't have any intermolecular forces or intermolecular attractions for each other. So when we look at gases in the real world, gases that we have in the atmosphere, gases that we work with in the chemistry laboratory, we have to ask ourselves this question. Do ideal gases really exist? And that's like saying, does the ideal chemistry teacher exist? Or does the ideal boyfriend or the ideal girlfriend exist in the real world? And I guess we'd have to say the answer is a big no. You know, there are no gases that have molecules that take up no space. All gas molecules take up space. And all molecules have intermolecular forces. In fact, if you're following this video series, this complete AP chemistry video course that I hope you subscribe to, uh, you know that there are intermolecular forces like London dispersion forces that can be pretty weak, but I mean that they're still there, aren't they? So I guess the short answer is there are no such thing as ideal gases, or at least not in our world. So what is the point of all of this? We've been talking about this ideal gas law, and now I'm telling you that it's there's no such thing as an ideal gas. Well, the point is, we can get pretty close. You know, there is no such thing as an ideal boyfriend or an, or an ideal girlfriend or an, an ideal chemistry teacher, but you can get pretty close, can't you? It's the same thing with gases. There's no such thing as ideal, but sometimes we can get pretty close. Real gases can approximate, can approximate ideal conditions. And let's think about how that would happen. You know, we can have some very small molecules like the ones we have on the screen here like helium and hydrogen and neon that are very very tiny as far as gases go and so we say that they are pretty close to ideal you know so that would uh, take care of one of those requirements or at least get it pretty close to ideal and also we've learned in this course already that there are some gas molecules that have very weak intermolecular forces you know, like uh, perhaps helium is a good example of that, right? It has, these are molecules that have very weak intermolecular forces. These London dispersion forces are very, very weak. Hydrogen, you know, neon are like that too. So they're pretty close to ideal. Now, other substances may not be very small, like, you know, other molecules are larger. Some other molecules have, uh, you know, stronger intermolecular forces. So, under what conditions could they be ideal? Well, under these two conditions, when they're having little attraction to each other, and that would be high temperature and lower pressures. Now, why would that be the case? Well, let's think about this. At high temperatures, we know that molecules are moving very, very fast. And so under high temperatures, the molecules may be getting close to each other, but there's just not enough time for them to interact. It's like if you're driving in a car and you're going very slow down a street and you see a neighbor or somebody that you know, you can wave to them. If you're going slow, you can wave to them. Out in country areas, some people, some people might even stop and have a conversation, right, if they're going slow enough. Well, on the interstate or on a freeway, the cars are going much faster and by the time they pass each other, 
you hardly know who's, who's there, so there's no time to interact. It's the same thing with molecules. At a high temperature, they're going so fast, they don't have time to interact. So that's close to ideal, as we see here, or at least closer to ideal. Now, lower pressure is the same way. Because remember, under lower pressure, these molecules are very, very far away from each other. And so that means they're just not able to interact as much. Under high pressures, you know, they're smashed a lot closer to each other, so they kind of have to interact more often. So if we want to know under what conditions do real gases approximate or get close to ideal, it will be high temperatures and low pressures. Now there is an equation that helps us to compensate for the differences between real gases in the real world and ideal gases on paper. And that's called the Van der Waals equation. And this is what it looks like, and it looks fairly complex. And on the AP Chemistry exam, you'll never be asked to actually calculate these things. But it is nice to know that you can use this equation. Uh, we have these other little variables A and B in here. The A corrects for the intermolecular forces between the gas molecules. And the B corrects for the actual size, the volume, of those gas particles themselves. And so once you plug these in here, you can actually compensate for the difference and find out what the real you know, volume or the real pressure is going to be with the Van der Waals equation. Now, we could take this into much greater depth into a higher level chemistry course and actually calculate all this and talk about other factors involved. But this takes us through pretty much what you need to know for general chemistry, or for AP chemistry. I hope you learned something from my video or liked it. If you did, please uh, destroy that like button. I would really appreciate it. I'm Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP chemistry for over 20 years, and I want you to get a five on your AP chemistry exam. If you're in general chemistry, I want you to get an A in your class. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again when we can learn some more chemistry together.